Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today is day two, not day one. It's gotten a lot warmer. Welcome to the beautiful state of Florida. Look at this. Anyway, I am headed down to Lake Okeechobee. It's about a two hour drive for me. So I'm leaving now. I'm gonna do some interviews with some of the guys that are in uh, group B, but it's day two of stage two of the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Open down on Lake Okeechobee. So let's do this. So I thought I'd give you an update on what happened. I've driven two hours and 15 minutes to get to Lake Okeechobee. And I knew the anglers are able to put in at different ramps. And when I got to the ramp that I was supposed to be at, there was maybe 10 anglers. Um, Brent Ayler was one. Uh, Kevin Van Dam was getting his boat work done, same with Skeet Reese. But my media contact wasn't there. And I felt like, well, I feel like I need to make sure that they know what I'm doing. So now I'm driving another 50 minutes to the Bass Pro Shops in Port St. Lucie and meeting my media person. And also there's a bunch of anglers there that I hopefully can do interviews with. I'm gonna to run to Bass Pro Shops, hopefully do some interviews. I might just use the GoPro to be honest at this point in time and just uh, do the best I can instead of using the, the Sony camera, but I'm not sure yet. So another 50 minutes and fingers crossed, we'll be able to spend 20 or 30 minutes just trying to get four or five people. But it's a little disappointing. So. Onward and upward. Let's keep positive. That's the best thing about this. I should say, it's freaking howling out here. And also, the other thing that sucks about this is I had scoped out an Arby's for dinner. And now, I'm not going to be able to go to Arby's. Not happy. No bueno. Okay. Keep driving without looking at y'all. Cody Meyer, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, how was yesterday for you? So yesterday was really good. You know, end of day um, in third place. It was it was fun out there. The wind was brutal for Lake Okeechobee. You know, we had uh, roughly 25 mile an hour winds, but overall caught six scoreable fish. Uh, I had a six pound three ounce and a five seven. So really, really happy with the day. And uh, at this point, just looking forward to getting back out there tomorrow and hopefully surviving, making that cut. How has the wind affected the fishing for you? So I would say the wind, the, for one, it's just hard to run around, fish a lot of areas. But uh, what's you know, being from Northern California, you don't get to experience Florida a lot. But the north end where I'm fishing, that Kings Bar area, Harney Pond area, um, it's pulling water out. So more than actually being in the wind, fighting the wind, it's pulling the water out, making my area shallower and shallower as the day goes on. So I'm hoping the wind kind of dies down, that water can backflow. We get a little bit more water in those areas and the fishing picks up for sure. Does the warmer weather, is that gonna help your fishing tomorrow? I would think the warmer weather definitely helps fishing uh, for me, but for everybody, just because they fish or they, they don't like cold fronts, they're probably gonna be fired up to have some sun on their back and uh, the warmer weather and hopefully get a little bit more active. Are you finding them, are they spawned already or are they pre, what, what are they right now? Yeah, so there's there's all three stages. There's still pre-spawn fish, you catch them, they're real white, um, just came off the main lake. You're definitely catching spawning fish, a lot of the bucks right now. Uh, water clarity is not great to see them actually spawning in areas, but and you're definitely catching post-spawn. You know, my two big ones yesterday were post-spawn, a 5.7 and a 6.3. Uh, just beat up, you know, you can tell they're just spawned real thin, uh, but still really big fish. So you're seeing all three, I say most of them right now are probably post-spawn, but um, who knows, you know, I know Florida, they spawn multiple times a year at times. How has the, t the new rule with the two pound limit affected the fishing? So the two pound rule has definitely slowed the pace down. You know, yesterday, I caught six scorable fish, but I would say I probably caught another 15 to 20 um, so you under did well. two pounds. Yes, caught a lot of fish. Now, 
last year at MLF Basketball Tour, that would have been incredible. Yeah, you know, I would have been weighing one pounders all day, but um, it, it made it back to normal tournament fishing where you got to really focus on big ones. And uh, it's more of uh, you could kind of slow down a little bit, throw stuff you know catches a lot of big fish, and it's really changed the game for, for us anglers this year. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time. Website? Uh, I have no webs well, website, CodyMeyer.com, uh, and then Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Cody Meyer Angler. Awesome. Thank you, dude. Yep. Jason Christie, how are you? I'm good. Good. Um, in Okeechobee, uh, fish day two tomorrow. Had a rough first day. You know what's weird is, and a lot of, what a lot of people don't understand, is Okeechobee is a massive, massive body of water. I fished down here, I don't know, eight or ten tournaments, and I found in practice the absolute best mile stretch that I've ever found. I mean, pre-spawn, post-spawn, everything mixed in, and it was my kind of fishing. And you go the first day, and you get there, and you, you know, you're thinking about the weather, trying to plan, you know the wind's going to blow and you're thinking that it's going to be protected and it was just blown smooth out. I mean, uh, there was three footers rolling in and I expected it to be calm. So it was kind of a kick in the tail and I, you know, I started hunting after that, just never found anything. But the good thing about Florida, it takes a couple big bites to get back in the hunt and, and uh, fishing is really tough and it's, it's not the lake. The lake's actually fishing really good. It's just the conditions. I mean, it's like being in the ocean and they're blowing 30. I mean, it's just really hard to fish. It's hard to make an accurate cast and uh, the water getting churned up, that's what hurts it the most. Does the new two pound, how did the new two pound rule affect, affect you? Um, well, it affected me a lot yesterday because I caught several, you know, in the pound to two pound, but I, I was all for the two pound minimum. I think it changes the way everybody's going to fish and it, it takes us away from, you know, focusing. There's a big difference between the one and the two pounder. I mean, a big, big difference. And, it's gonna help it. I think the, it's what the fans wanted, it's what the sponsors wanted, and it's what I wanted to. When you have a tough day like yesterday or when it's windy like this, do you, is there a certain bait you use? Do you use something that makes a little bit more noise or do you, or do you slow down and start using worms, sinkos, right. that kind of stuff? I think um, it depends on the conditions you have. Like yesterday, the areas that our fish got pretty dirty. So I'm using baits, you know, like a bladed jig, you know, a big jig flip, and just baits that displace a lot of water. If I, and if it was clear, you know, you could probably flip, you know, stick baits and stuff like that. But it's just, it was everything's moving. You got to imagine the bass is in two foot of water, and the reeds and the grass and everything's moving. It's gonna be hard to get his attention unless you put it right on his nose. So I feel like in those conditions, you need to be using baits that will get their attention. Last but not least, this month you put together the Monster Bass Box. Oh yeah. Has anyone asked you about this yet? <laughs> How much fun was it to do that? Oh, it was a lot of fun. You know, they, they actually just asked me to put together eight or ten baits and what I would use throughout the year. And what's funny is I, I guess they're required or they're asked to tag me and I have this month I've got <laughs> hundreds of tags and you know I my boss told me about it and I didn't know it was that big of a deal until I started getting these tags and all these people getting these baits so uh, it's a pretty cool deal. I think everyone's pretty excited that you put it together a box good. of all the stuff you've done because you've been very successful good. so yeah I'm glad to do it. Well good luck tomorrow Thanks. all you gotta do is it's I mean really it's just fishing yeah. And you just got to catch a couple of big ones. They're out there. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of them out there. I've seen them this week, and and uh, you know what? What I'm gonna have to do tomorrow is I'm gonna go to a totally new area. I've not seen it. I'm just gonna treat it like a practice day. Just go fishing. I don't want to go anywhere that I've been. Just somewhere new. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Jason Lambert. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you guys? I am very good. Tell me how yesterday was for you. You know, yesterday was a fun day. It was a long day, it was a very windy day, but <laughs> anytime you can end up in the top five with this group of guys, it's a good day. So, no complaints, um, had a couple of losses, had two that I saw, uh, like a six and about three that came unbuttoned, which would, gave us, uh, you know, another eight, nine pounds, but, you know, all in all, there's nothing to complain about, tough conditions, cold conditions, we're in the top five, we got one more day tomorrow, we'll go see what happens. The weather's 
I don't know if the wind's gonna get better, but at least the sun's out today. Is that gonna affect your fishing tomorrow? The sun really helps in Florida. Anywhere you go with Florida strain fish, the sun really, really helps. The, um, the temperatures tonight are gonna be a problem. Tomorrow afternoon, the fish should bite better. The wind's supposed to lay down five to 10 tomorrow. Um, changing directions coming out of the east, so who knows how that's gonna move the water around, but it, it'll, it should start getting a little better every day. It should be a little better tomorrow afternoon, a little better on Monday, and then by Tuesday, Wednesday, we should catch them pretty good. How did the two pound effect, two pound fish affect you in this first in these this year and i love it i mean everybody knows me as an offshore power fisherman you know i, I fish for big ones always have and last year it got in my head a little bit when you know score trackers going off and you know these guys that caught seven or eight well it change, makes you change the way you fish it makes you start chasing fish instead of fishing the way that you're comfortable fishing so for me the two pound deal is was a dream come true like it it allows you to go back to fishing the way you've always fished because you know, catching a one pounder, I mean, honestly, if this would have been a one pound limit, somebody would have won this tournament in a rim canal. Yeah. A square bill or, you know, shaky head or whatever. So it, it brings the, the strategy of fishing back into it and not just catching. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm excited about it. When you, when you talk about strategy to catch the bigger fish, exactly. does it do you start to, when you get down here in Florida, did you start looking at lily pads, punching, doing that kind of stuff, or are you well, still going in? I, I'm, I'm still, I, I'm a chunker and a winder. Yeah. I, mean, I can punch, you know, I grew up Tennessee River, we punched hydrilla a lot up there, so the punching part I'm good with. The flipping part, man, I'll be honest, I spend more time getting unhung than I do yeah, flipping. Yeah. So I like to cast, I, I'm a casting fisherman. Power fishing. I love the power fish, and the thing about it is you don't get as many bites doing that. So with the two pound limit, even though you hadn't caught one and there's 10 guys on the board, I mean, one swing of the rod's a four and a half, five pounder, and then, you know, the whole game changes. So, yeah, for me, I, I'm looking for hydrilla offshore somewhere, you know, scattered pads, a dollar pad, something that I can throw a swim jig in, chatterbait, yeah. speed worm, that type of stuff. That's what I like. Is finding the clear water uh, crucial tomorrow for you? The clear water is a big, big deal. It's not been as big a deal this trip as I thought it was going to be. Really? Um, the two big ones I caught yesterday out of 5.2 and a 4.4, they were both in pretty stained water, pretty dirty water. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of on that borderline, though, where the, the dirt's like starting and the clean water is behind it. So it's not as big a deal, or it doesn't seem to be as big a deal to me as it has in the past. But clear water is absolutely a necessity in Florida most of the time. What, uh, if you don't mind me asking, is there a certain, are you, you said speed worm, bladed jig, is there something you, they, what did you catch the big ones on yesterday? I caught everything that I weighed in yesterday on a vibrating jig. Okay. So, you know, I just put a little bio bait, swim bait trailer on the back of it. You know, a lot of guys throw the crawl or whatever. I personally like the swim bait better. Yeah. So I actually threw two different trailers. I threw a, my, my thing I'm known for, the Jerky J back on, but it's yeah. small, a little five inch, just small little swim bait. Put the Castaic Jerky J. Castaic Jerky J and the, the, my little three eights when I was throwing, I was throwing a little three and a half inch bio bait, swim bait trailer. So. You talked about the bio bait and they have a, that bait has a ton of scent to it. Do you find that, that, that you could put something like that on and maybe get them to bite with a scented lure instead of a vibrating jig maybe well if it comes to if it comes down to getting a tough bite absolutely yeah it makes a huge difference i mean we we make the little five inch stick o which is a stick bait yeah you know I, I firmly believe that the scent and the feel of that bait makes a big big difference if you're fishing real finicky fish now power bait fishing where you know you're chunking and winding and you're reeling it five miles an yeah. hour i mean i'm not sure that the scent trail yeah. really matters that much but if you're finesse fishing or having to slow down and fish a piece of plastic, I think it makes a big difference. Well, good luck tomorrow. Yes, sir, man. Thank you all. Stay with it. Uh, website, YouTube? Everything's Jason Lambert Fishing. Uh, YouTube. Actually, YouTube's a little different. We haven't got it up and going yet, so we don't need to advertise that one yet. But Instagram, Facebook, website, Jason Lambert Fishing is the head title, title for all of them. Awesome. Nice to meet you. No problem, man. Thank, Thank you, you man. all. Thanks for having us. Michael Collins, how are you? I'm doing good, man. How was your day yesterday? You know, to be honest with you, my day was a little disappointing. Uh, I, I really had a relatively good practice here on Okeechobee. I mean, probably one of the better practices I've had. I felt like, you know, for the first time I got down here and I didn't feel like I was chasing spawning fish the whole time. You know, it, it was one of them deals, a lot of fish are done spawning. There's a lot of fish just feeding, you know, really kind of looking up. So uh, practice went well. I knew the front was coming. You know, I hoped it wouldn't hit as soon as it did. but. Uh, 
I had opportunities. I mean, I ended up weighing two for 515, had the right quality fish, caught a lot of, you know, non-scorable bass, but essentially when you don't fish clean, you, you put yourself in a rough position. I mean, like I said, I actually had uh, five, if not six keeper bites yesterday, you know, saw saw the fish, not, not just those ones that you talk about, but I actually saw them. So, you know, I should be in probably the top 10, so I'm looking forward to them all. Hopefully with today, you know, it, the sun popped back out. Yeah. Uh, things warm back up. The wind's still blowing, but, um, you know, the big thing is if that water temperature will come back up a little bit today, uh, start warming up, and then not get too cold tonight. Hopefully tomorrow will be a little better, especially tomorrow afternoon. How important is getting clean water down here in Okeechobee for you? <laughs> you know, this time, I don't know if it's quite as critical. I mean, clean water is always a big deal, but I mean, the lake is in such different shape now yeah. than what it used to be. I mean, used to, you had to seek out that clean water, and there's just not a lot of clean water to be found right now, honestly. I mean, you know, you definitely look for the cleaner, yeah. uh, but it isn't like, you know, the, the old times when you used to come down here and find that gin clear water, you know, in various places on the lake. So, uh, you know, clearer water I guess would be the best terminology is is definitely what I'm focusing on you know if I can see my my baits down you know eight ten inches I feel pretty good when you throw something in there and you can only see it down three or four you're probably not in the right area how did the two pound how does this two pound well, how are you call it weight scorable bass affect your fishing to me this is in my opinion the best thing major league fishing has done you know I feel like in the cups when we started major league fishing the whole key to it was none of us practiced none of us knew where we were we exactly. did no research so we were all just going fishing anyway and it just we landed on one pounds being the the minimum scorable bass and, and it worked great but when you practice for two days we're also inclined to try to fish for bigger ones that if you fish for bigger ones and then somebody figures out that smaller fish pattern you get behind so quick that you can't fish your strengths and to me the two pounds uh, variable weight or the two pound minimum we've set so far this year it, it fits right with my style it allows me to slow down you know I mean my nickname's Peepaw for a reason I like to take my time I like to you know fish thoroughly and this allows me to do it are you are you looking for bass in like are you looking for grass or are you looking pitching and doing you know, that kind of stuff the big thing for me is i'm mixing it up a little bit i mean i'm, I'm trying to fish for you know areas that uh you know have some sporadic isolated stuff so you can you know really key in on isolated targets but i'm also fishing areas that have matted stuff close you know i'm fishing a lot of isolated reeds and, and buggy whips but then there's matted up which it, it got even worse matted yesterday because of the the, the lake shifting mm -hmm. uh Kissimmee grass and it seems like even if the fish are on isolated stuff they're going to be close to the Kissimmee grass so uh, you know or, or eelgrass whatever it may be are you uh, what's the beta choice this week you know for me um, once I had determined and I've been in Florida for about five days now fishing other lakes and you know even up north of here I felt like a lot of the fish were, were post spawn I saw a lot of fry a lot of fish were becoming pretty active so I pretty well made the decision that I was going to cover water as much as I could I've thrown a spinnerbait some a swim jig a lot and you know when they go through those phases where they're not actively feeding they start missing a bait then I'm picking up a half or a three quarter ounce jig or something even heavier and punching the thicker stuff is to how crucial is the weather today going to affect your fishing tomorrow you know i think the big thing about the weather today is it, it definitely started to come back around i mean i know this front's going to have an effect for a few days but i mean the fact that it, it got in the upper 70s today the sun shined pretty much all day while i was at okeechobee prior to coming up here so i feel like that water started to rebound a little bit from the the temperature it lost yesterday now tonight it's going to get a colder yeah. i think in the morning the person's going to have to slow down and, and not try to get in too big a hurry but i think as the day progresses and the water warms back up it should allow me to to get back to doing what i was doing you know earlier in the week now tomorrow do you have a set goal that you know I'm gonna make the cut and then do you try to just make the cut and then try to find more fish for day f whatever that next day is or do you just flat out I want to win it and get to the finals you know that's a, that, that's a, I mean anytime you're in that position where you, you can win it and advance straight to the finals I mean you're you're guaranteeing yourself a top 10 finish mm -hmm. if you just try to stay on enough fish to, to make the cut you've got to fish against 40 guys and you could go from having a top 10 to 40th. So in my opinion, just as, as you saw last week at Eufaula, um, I got myself in that position late in the day that I felt like I could win the round. And um, I went back to some fish that I had found previously, you know, in the, the first day of fishing to try to, you know, make the championship round. And, and it just didn't pan out that day. But I mean, if I got on the right fish here tomorrow and had that opportunity to possibly win my round, I'm gonna stay on them and win it. But if you get yourself in that 
that cut line or comfortably in the cut, yeah, if you can do a little bit of looking and hunting and pecking and trying to find more fish, it's going to be critical. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Man. Thank you very much. And, uh, Instagram, website, all that stuff. Yeah, look. be sure to look me up. I just, you know, Mike McClellan, professional angler, and uh, check it all out Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I, I got it all. Awesome. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, man. Thank you, man. You bet.